What's poppin' everybody? It's Sable Frank 4, bringing you guys Pokemon sets from past formats. And today we're gonna be looking at the 10th set of the EX series, 3rd generation sets. And it's going to be EX Unseen Forces. Now, pretty much all of the 3rd generation EX sets are epic for me. In some form or another, they're all great. But I guess you could say EX Unseen Forces is the objectively epic one. Uh, having 145 cards in the set. This might seem kind of small or just standard these days with our Sun and Moon sets, but for back then in the third generation, this was a truly exceptional set. And they really picked uh, picked on kind of the uh, a good theme for it. You know, they decided, hey, the big set should be the the set focused on the second generation Pokemon, you know, uh, gold, silver, crystal, those games, and the second generation is kind of a legendary for most Pokemon fans, and for good reasons. And this is basically the theme of this set. It's mostly, uh, it's a third generation set, but the theme is a lot of the gold and silver second generation Pokemon. Um, it also features the unknowns, which we wouldn't have seen them since the Neo Destiny set, I, I think, yeah, long, long time. Uh, from Neo Destiny to this set, a uh, decent amount of time at the very least. And uh, that's actually part of the reason why this set is so big. It's because there's a shitload of unknowns that basically uh, function as reverse reverse foils in one in every five packs from what I read on Bulbapedia. So perhaps in one of every five packs, as opposed to getting your regular reverse foil, you get one of these. And uh, we might look at them, uh, but the, it's a lot. It's a lot of cards, man. A lot of unknowns. And a lot of cards in general. So, I guess I should start from the EXs, the bottom. There's a lot of great cards in this set. It was a very significant set competitive, competitively as well. But let's look at the bottom. The box topper, or you could say like the secret error from this set that you want, one that you always get, is Rocket's Persian EX. And it's the last sort of um, owner's Pokemon from that era. Technically a Rockets, Rockets card, but it appears on this set. And then Celebi X, it's the secret rare you get in the booster boxes if you're really lucky. I think it it was difficult to get. It's one of the harder ones to get. Appearing like every one, in, one of every two booster boxes, maybe three. You, you never know. But this is like the actual secret rare that you can get from packs. This is the top of card. So let's look at the Rocket Persian EX. Uh, it's kind of cool, I'm not going to lie. Uh, even though Persian isn't really... I, I don't like that Pokemon much. At all, to be honest. I'm, I'm pretty neutral about it. But it has 100 HP, 1 Retreat. Okay, decent stats. And it has Nightcry. Once during your turn, if Rocket's Persian is on your bench, you may search your deck for a Pokemon with darker rockets in its name. Show it to your opponent and put it into your hand. So this is a great... Uh, Team Rocket support Pokemon. So obviously if you're running a Team Rocket deck, depending on the deck, this can be a valuable asset. can basically get you any Rocket or Dark Pokemon every turn. doesn't have to be basic. doesn't have to be evolved. So it's pretty good. Now the attack uh, might be meh. It does 20 for 3. And then the defending Pokemon is poisoned. You put 2 damage counters instead of 1. So I guess it's going to be 40 for at the end of your turn. And then if your opponent stays, then it becomes 60, and then it adds from there. Not very impressive, especially for three energies. It doesn't matter if it's colorless. Uh, if it worked on perhaps two energies, I would have been okay. Uh, but the ability, the Poke Power, actually, uh, is what you would run this Pokemon for. It's actually quite good. Only a stage one. Why not? Okay. Next up, let's look at the Celebi X. Yeah, this, I'm pretty sure this card is quite expensive when I, I seen, seen it in auctions and stuff, people bidding on it. Much more expensive than the Pop Celebi X, the Psychic one, because it's actually really hard to get. It's an EX, but it's actually a secret rare. Normally, uh, secret rares are reserved for the gold stars uh, in this era, but this is an actual, actually an EX, that secret rare. We had a few other ones, like I think the... Team Rocket's Raikou, I believe, uh, EX. Anyway, so it's a basic Pokemon, 70 HP, 
It's got Spiral Leaf, flip a coin if heads put one damage card on each of your opponent's Pokemon. If tails heal one from each of your Pokemon. So a pretty decent attack. Uh, there's other Pokemon that can do like maximum spread to all of your opponent's Pokemon for one energy. But they're usually like stage two, at best stage one. So maybe with this, you could do a little bit of good damage spread around. And if not, you heal all your guys, so that might be handy too. You never know. Uh, decent attack, I guess. And then Time Trap. You flip a coin. If heads, look at the top four cards of your opponent's deck and put them back on your... Uh, put them back on top of your opponent's deck in any order. And if tells, look at the top four cards of your deck and put them back in any order. Uh, okay. Does 30 damage for two and... You have the chance to either arrange your your deck or your opponent's deck, the top four cards. I guess it can be kind of handy. If if you get heads, then you can basically sort of arrange your opponent's deck like the Chatot from Supreme Victors used to do in Sable Lock. People use that, you know, put bad cards on top of your opponent's deck. So if they don't have a supporter, you know, you force them to draw something bad. And... If you get Tails, then you can arrange your cards. That can be handy, too. So decent, I guess, for a little basic Pokemon. But it doesn't really provide uh, much of support. If you're going to use a basic Pokemon that doesn't evolve, uh, you usually want it to have a pretty significant support role. And Jirachi pretty much uh, had that covered. Uh, there was no competition, almost. Good card for your collection, though. It's pretty. If you have the money to get it. Okay, next up we got the Gold Stars here, the Entei, Raikou, and Suikin Gold Stars. And yeah, these are very unique in that they're Gold Stars, but they're not actually uh, Secret Rares. As you guys can see the numbers, it doesn't go over 115, which is the, I guess you could say the normal number for this set. But with the Unknowns, it adds up. Uh, this is without the Unknowns. So let's look at them. Got Entei. A burning turn, switch and take one of your bench Pokemon and you do 20. Okay, it's a hit and switch attack. Uh, fortunately, you can only run this at once, so you probably couldn't make a deck with him. And detonation, if you have less prize cards than your opponent, discard the top 10 cards of your deck. Wow, so you can't really use this if you're winning. Otherwise, you're going to basically deck yourself out. Uh, losing 10 cards is crazy, it's too insane. Uh, only, I guess, if it's going to be a, like a couple of turns left for you to win, you're sure. But 3 for 7, it's, it's actually impressive for a basic Pokemon. Uh, you won't, don't, won't see this kind of damage. But this is why the cost is there, and this is a gold star. So it might be good if you're losing, uh, like a fire tech. Uh, if you can accelerate fire energies on it, I guess you could use it in Blaziken. There's just much better options, so... Mostly a collectible card. Then we got Raikou, Gold Star. Gotta love this sort of claw art here. It's gonna fuck us up. Yeah, Leopard. Uh, okay, 80 HP, 1 Retreat as well. Lightning Turn. So I guess the same thing. You switch it with one of your bench Pokemon. And then Meta Voltage. If you have less prize cards than your opponent, this attack does 40 damage to each of your Pokemon. Uh, this isn't so bad because... You can actually combine this with Pokemon that maybe benefit of getting hurt, I guess. But it's still a really bad effect otherwise. You know, hitting everybody for 40, uh, that can be pretty rough. Uh, softening up all of your Pokemon. But it's the same. 3 Lightning Energy for 70 damage. The same sort of uh, damage. And then Suicune. I think this guy does some different shit, but I could be wrong. Uh, this card is very beautiful. I own like a fake version of this card in the Persian. That's why I remember them. Yeah, back in the day, we would buy fake Pokemon cards without realizing they were fake. Uh, all the money I spent, I could have bought a few actual real booster boxes. Damn shame. But I guess we could still use the cards that play, so it's not bad. Uh, it's got Splash and Turn, so the same hit and switch thing. And then Crosswind. If you have less prize cards than your opponent, discard all energy cards attached to all of your Pokemon. Now this might be the least devastating cost, because if you have only Suicune with 3 energies, then it's just basically you're doing 70 to discard 3. So, 
it's not so bad, I guess, if you want to use this when you're winning. Uh, water Gold Star. Okay. But these are actually, I think, they should be one of the cheaper Gold Stars to get because they're not actually Secret Airs. Uh, regular Gold Stars, for the most part, you would get one for every two or three boxes. Very difficult to get. If my assessment is even correct. Okay, so since we're in this area here, talk about the EXs. There's a lot of them here, and a lot of them are great. So many great EXs and so many competitive cards. So we'll look at them in order uh, so that I don't miss anything. So you got Bliss EX. Really love this card. It's really beautiful. Uh, a lot of the, all of the EX sets, they basically went back and forth with how they went with the holographic borders and the technology on the cards. Uh, EX Unseen Forces is one of those sets where the cars really just have a lot of holofoil uh, shininess to them. They're really, they're really bright, those little particle things. They're really rich on those, and they really look like actual EXs from that era uh, in my eyes. But anyways, uh, this Pokemon has very good HP being Blissey, 160 HP, pretty nice. One Retreat, which is actually quite good for Blissey. And it's got Blissful Support. Once during your turn, when you play Blissey to evolve one of your Pokemon, you may discard all the energy cards attached to any number of your Pokemon and remove all damage cards from those Pokemon. So it might remind you of Blissey Prime, which basically does almost the same thing, only this card is much more flexible, much more superior. So you get to pick uh, which Pokemon you want to discard all the energies and heal. Now, I'm not sure if the ruling is that you you have to discard energies to get the healing effect, but I don't believe it should work like that. Uh, I think you can still get the healing if you pick Pokemon that just don't have any energies. So it's quite powerful. And like back in those days, there, were, there was, of course, like Power Lock and stuff like that, but not in the extent of uh, you know the SP era with power sprays and with everybody just blocking powers in some form or another. So this actually this can be a pretty strong effect depending on the right deck. If you run if you run the low energy decks, it might not be so bad. Then energy absorption, attach up to three energy cards from your discard pile to Bliss CX. So you can instantly power yourself up and be ready for rollout. But unfortunately, rollout is a pretty shitty attack. I have to be honest. And energy absorption, you know, doesn't even do damage. So this Pokemon is mostly going to be used, entirely used, honestly, for the Poke Power. And I guess in in certain dire situations, I guess maybe you can attack with it. Uh, against Dragon Pokemon, you'll get the weakness. The attack works with any energy. And I guess you can use things like, God, I think, I believe Boost Energy works on this Pokemon. Yeah, it can work. Uh, man, I always forget, I always confuse, like, all the little limitations of Scramble Energy and Boost Energy, damn. But, just don't take my word on it, but I think some of those crazy special energies, they should work on Bliss EX. So, yeah, very nice card, Bliss e, one of my favorite Pokemon. So, looking good, looking good, the art is the best thing, love it. Absolutely love it. Speaking of loving, this is even cooler. Espeon EX takes me back to the TCG overview of Espeon. This might be one of the strongest Espeon cards ever printed, if not the strongest one. It's actually a borderline perfect card from every angle, if you ask me, uh, design-wise. And it was actually kind of competitive, too, if you run an Evolution deck from back then. you, It's recommended you run at least one of this. So an EX Stage 1 Pokemon with 110 HP. Still quite good. It's not Blissey, so don't get... Don't get uh, confused that it's not good. Blissey was the sort of exception. Uh, 110 HP for an EX is quite good for a stage 1, especially with the free retreat. That's even better. And it's got two very solid attacks and a powerful power. So let's look at the attacks first. Uh, Snap Tail, you choose one of your opponent's Pokemon, and it's a 30 snipe. Uh, it's, it's not bad, you know, just two of any energy and you can snipe. It's not the greatest damage in the world, but it's pretty fair considering, you know, Salamence X did 40 for 2, but it's a stage 
uh, stage 2 EX Pokemon, what have you. And then Psyloop is the real attack. Uh, there was no DC, so you can't do the Espeon GX shenanigans, but it's a powerful attack. And it's kind of similar to Psychic from Espeon GX. Psyloop, excuse me, for 3 energy, it does 60 plus 30 more for each trainer card your opponent has in play. Now back then, supporters, uh, actual trainers, and I believe stadiums, they, they all counted as trainers. So basically, if your opponent had like a tool <laughs> uh, on a bunch of tools down, they had their own stadium, this was going to do very high damage. Like just having one, it means you're doing 90 for 3, which is already quite impressive. And if they just have 2 and like 3, just 2 doing 120 for 3, it's absolutely fantastic for back then. You know, it's a 120 attack for no cost. It's incredibly high damage for having no costs. 3 energy attack. And then if they have a 3 with 150, you're going to take care of a lot of EX Pokemon even. And... I mean, you're going to take care of a stage 2 Pokemon anyway. So it's a very powerful attack. It can get really dangerous. It forces your opponent not to play their you know, trainers that stay on the field, like stadiums. And uh, like stadiums, tools, supporters, they go away at the end of the turn. So uh, you're not going to get the plus from that. But it really just forces them to make a shit decision. Either play it and then make this attack insanely powerful. You're going to get one hit knockouts, or just keep them around, and then they're stuck in their hand. You know, they, they can't use them. They have to shuffle them back in. They can't really utilize cards like Steven's Advice. So it gives them the option uh, to have a shitty decision or <laughs> to basically make your attack busted. So it's pretty good. And there were some good tools as well, like the Cessation Crystal and good stadiums like the Battle Frontier we looked at. Uh, and Emerald, and, you know, a lot of great stadiums in general. So, it's a great attack, no doubt. And then, Devil Flash, probably the strongest thing on this Pokemon. It's once during your turn, when you play Espeon EX from your hand to Evolve, you can choose one Evolve Pokemon from your opponent's bench, remove the highest stage evolution, and then put it back into your opponent's hand. So, this is the devolution stuff. That Espeon kind of does as well with the Espeon EX from Breakpoint. But this is an, in the form of a power. It's not an attack. So you basically evolve, choose a evolved Pokemon from your opponent that's badly hurt, let's say, and it's sitting on the bench. And you basically get a free knockout like that. Like if there's like a big EX uh, badly hurt on the bench, your opponent has to devolve that guy. Then the little, the little dude, like Stage 1 or basic Pokemon, you know, with all those damage counters, if it's hurt, it's going to get knocked out. You get a free prize like that. Heavy disruption on your opponent. Or what you can do is remove uh, a, a sort of Pokemon like that that's sitting on the bench. Maybe it has a powerful power of its own or some sort of an effect. You can even just pull and then kill the little basic Pokemon. All sorts of things. You know, Devolution Flash is definitely useful. Devolving your opponent's Pokemon is powerful when it's in the form of a power like this and it doesn't spend your your turn to attack. You know, that's why this card was good. And just all around, as you guys can see, it has a good second attack. The uh, first attack is decent too. Stats are great. Free retreat. Devolution Flash is useful. The art is great on this card. It's beautiful. This is the most expensive card I paid money to get actually too. Uh, unfortunately, since we couldn't get it back when we were supposed to. Yep, yep. Okay, spend enough time on you, my beloved Espeon. Uh, for Alligator EX then, this card is also super cool and super strong. Quite competitive, if I say so myself, thanks to overpowering Fang. Uh, as long as for Alligator EX is active, each pair's Pokemon, excluded in EX, can't use Poke Powers and Poke Bodies. So... Um... You, you can't use your own stuff too, so this can't be uh, kind of fucked up. But obviously, if you're going to run a Pokemon like this, they're going to be careful how do you build your deck. But this is powerful, man. You can shut down entire decks just with this Poke Body. I mean, Pokemon EX aren't going to be affected 
but it's still strong, of course. Covers powers and bodies. Uh, you can't ask for a much better body than this, honestly. You can't ask for more. And attacks are pretty solid, too. Uh, Tsunami does 30 damage plus 10 more damage uh, to each of your opponent's bench Pokemon, so it has a very strong spreading effect while doing solid damage in the active, too. So with a full bench, basically you're doing 80 for 2 total damage. Not bad. And then Sore Spot kind of goes well with the first attack. Uh, this attack does 70 damage for 4, but it's going to do 10 more damage for each damage counter on the defending Pokemon. So, if they have just 3 damage counters on, this becomes an 100 for 4 attack, which is very solid, uh, if I'm being honest. So, you're going to soften up a bunch of Pokemon, and then with Sword Spots, finish them off in in a, in the vein like you're getting one hit not guts, basically. Pretty good. 150 HP is standard for any X. Free Retreat is kind of big, but thankfully it only has one one weakness. It doesn't have two, so that's very good actually, because having a Grass weakness too could have been it was going to be worse, of course. Pretty cool. Also takes me back to my second TCG overview for for Alligator. Great, great times. Ho Ho EX. I think this Pokemon is kind of weak, but I guess we're going to find out, sort of remember. It's got Golden Wing. If Ho-Ho EX will be knocked out by damage from an opponent's attack, you may move up to two energy attached to Ho-Ho to your Pokemon in any way you like. Uh, great. It's actually a strong power. Basically, you get to save two energies uh, if it's going to get knocked out. So it's actually quite good. Uh, it's an EX with 110 HP. Very good, since it's a basic. You know, two retreat cost. Okay. And then Rainbow Burn uh, does 10 more, does 10 damage plus 20 more for each type of basic energy attached to Ho Ho EX. Okay, so if you have three different types of basic energy on, that's 60. So you're doing 70 for three. And uh, let me think. Mm, yeah, you're doing 70 for three, and then you can make it even stronger if you add even. If you add other basic energies, different types. Um, it does have an unlimited ceiling, but it's going to be difficult to power it up like that. Especially considering um, it needs different types, and it kind of needs a lot if it's going to do high damage. I mean, 70 for three, for three different types, it's not bad. But, you know, it's kind of... Ho-Ho always kind of has difficulty with this sort of attack. Um, there are a few Pokemon that maybe could help, like, let's say, damn, um, Blastoise, you could do like the Blastoise, uh, Delta Species, like Hull and Energy combo, but uh, Lugia, which we're going to look at, was better, so that's the point, that's the reason, but it's a cool card, collectible. Lugia X. Okay, so this is the real competitive card. So it has 10 less HP, but it's actually a much better trade-off if you ask me, because it has a fighting resistance and only one retreat. And it has Silver Sparkle. Uh, if Lugia X is your active Pokemon and is damaged by an opponent's attack, you flip a coin. If heads, you choose an energy card, attach the attacking Pokemon, and return it to the opponent's hand. So basically every time this dude gets... Uh, damaged, even if it gets knocked out. You flip a coin, if heads, you basically uh, slow down your opponent by moving energies from their attacking Pokemon to their hand. So that's that can be useful. And the busted attack, this was one of the strongest attacks, especially for back then, Elemental Blast. Uh, you had to discard a fire, a water, and a lightning energy, uh, but it was going to do 200 damage. So it's a three energy attack that requires three specific types. You discard all of them, but 200 damage is fucking insane, man, especially for back then. Uh, it's it, it honestly was damaged before it, its time. Like Even though it requires a very specific cost and you discard all energies, there are other Pokemon that have similar conditions and they don't even do like even half as much, you could say. So this is incredibly, incredibly powerful. And this card was used as a sort of... A, Game Ender finisher in the Blastoise Steelix EX deck, which a lot of the cards, well, not a lot of them, but 
quite a few of them are in here. Blastoise in, is an EX Fire and Leaf Green, but Steelix is in here too. And you, you basically, it's kind of like the Deluge Blastoise, only you had to do a few more technical stuff to get the energy acceleration. But that's what that's what the idea was. You accelerate energy and get one hit knockouts on anything. So this card is very powerful. It's actually very cool. I like Ho Ho more than Lugia, if I'm being honest. But you know, comparing these two cards in this set, this Lugia X looks really extremely cool. This sort of sort of art, you know, the background, the angle of the art, it just blows Ho Ho out of the water. I have to say, very very cool card. I don't own. I need to get, but ah, oh God, we don't have the money. There's a lot of stuff we gotta get. So yeah, uh, you used Steelix because it had more HP, and you used this guy sort of as a game ender. It's basically the same idea with Rayquaza X. You know, they're they're very very powerful, but even though they're basics and they have 100 HP, it's kind of standard for EX basic Pokemon back then. It's still a little on the low side. They're gonna die much quicker than other Pokemon. So you want to be kind of careful with them. Uh, you don't want to like rely on them too much. Give your opponent easy prizes, especially considering you know the EX stage two Pokemon would get would get out pretty quickly with the strong rare candy we had. So that's that's the point. You know the formats were setup oriented, so you you might as well just take advantage of them as opposed to relying on basic EX Pokemon too much. Meganium EX, Puka's, <laughs> Puka's card, I guess. Uh, he talks about this card, uh, really liking it in one of his, uh, in his video where he talks about his favorite decks. Uh, and it's a little, it's a solid card. I mean, I don't remember what it does, but we're going to find out. Uh, 150 HP, it's good, I guess. True retreat, not bad. Water resistance is useful. The problem is, is the grass and fire weakness. It unfortunately does get the double weakness, which sucks. Now, the grass weakness might seem weird to you guys, but like I've mentioned before uh, in other videos, uh, poison uh, was grass before the fourth generation. So, you know, poison Pokemon like Crobat and Muck and all these poison Pokemon, they were grass, they were not psychic. So that's what the grass weakness is supposed to be like. Meganium is being weak to poison. Okay, it's got Nurture and Heal. Once during your turn, you may attach a Grass Energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon. If you do remove one Damage Counter from that Pokemon. So this is basically the Sepatalus from Primal Clash Energy Acceleration Attack, which it didn't do shit. Kind of a missed opportunity. They should have made it like a Deluge Attack. Uh, we really didn't care about the healing. Uh, but, I mean, in a Pokemon like this, it's not so bad because we didn't need like a million energies. And, you know, stage 2 Pokemon would come out on the field much easier. Like, the problem with Sebatov from Primal Clash is that it's it's going to take forever to get at least 2 to 3 out, you know, with a slower candy. So, you know, you're going to have trouble accelerating a lot of grass energies. Uh, with this, though, it's not so bad. And that's basically what it does. Uh, you get uh, grass energy... Uh, attachment it can be anywhere and you heal one damage counter too so it's similar to the uh, swamp herds from ex ruby and zaphar that you can only attach one uh, you get the healing and you can attach it anywhere uh, that guy needs to be on the active position but it's it's still good you know this is an ex pokemon but it's good uh, razor leaf isn't a very good attack though doing three for 50 it's kind of underwhelming i wish it was at least 60 at least that what that's what Salamence does from uh, Dragon for Tears, and that wasn't so good either for three energy. Anyway, it's you can use any energy too, so that can be handy. And then Power Poison for five energy, you do ninety, and then you discard an energy attached to Meganium X. Uh, if any Pokemon is now poisoned, that's not a very good attack. Um, I mean, with the poison, it is technically like a hundred for five. And it's going to get 110 if your opponent keeps it active. But you also have to discard an energy attached to Meganium. Uh, there's other Pokemon that can basically do 105 anyway. It's not completely ass, but you're never going to power it up in time, honestly. Even with uh, Meganium EX. I guess if you have a couple of these, 
you can sort of power it up uh, quicker than normal and it's compatible with boost energy too so you might you might have a little deck going even if you want to use meganium ex uh, i mean puka said he did some stuff with the deck uh, in that era you know using his favorite pokemon meganium so uh, who knows it, it might be able to do shit but there's better decks definitely in this era uh, there's a better deck already that we talked about okay polytoad ex uh, this card can be used for some tricks. So, upward lick. Choose one of your opponent's Pokemon. Uh, does 30 damage, and if that Pokemon is a stage 2, then the stack is 50 instead. So, it's basically a snipe attack. That's not bad. And if that Pokemon is a stage 2, it does 50. So, that's, that's pretty good, not gonna lie. It's a nice little snipe attack. Then, punch and run. This is the... I guess you could say actual attack you would use if you use Polito DX. You do 40 for 3 and then you switch Polito with one of your bench Pokemon. So this is your hit and switch attack. And Jason Klasinski does have a deck with this Pokemon uh, hit and switch deck with this, uh, yeah, Polito DX in his articles. It's probably the best dude, I guess, does the highest damage for hit and switch. Now, of course. 3 damage for 40 is not the best, but hey, uh, I'm not the greatest player in the world. If Jason builds a deck with it, it might be something. There's a lot of annoying walls you can promote in this era, so I guess it can't be something. And then swallow up uh, before doing damage. Count the remaining HP. So if any Pokemon and Polity DX, if any Pokemon has fewer HP, uh, this deck does 120 damage instead. So... Yeah, if the Venue Pokemon has fewer remaining HP than Polydor, the EX, uh, 120 for 4. Can't be something, 70 for 4, though it's not that good. Uh, you would use this Pokemon for Punch and Run if you used it. Stats are good, once again, it's basically the same stats as uh, for Alligator EX. Okay. Scissor and Steelix. Pokemon that evolve with Metal Coat. So Scissor, this art is just very similar to the GX one, Celestial Storm. Uh, I think it's kind of obvious. And they did model it after this card, uh, like they do all the time now. Uh, it is a little different though. Uh, let's see, so Danger Perception, as long as Scissor EX remaining HP 60 or less, Scissor EX does 40 more damage to the Penny Pokemon. Okay. So yeah, kind of like the same body ability. Uh, I think mm, 120, so it needs to be half. Uh, the other one, uh, you need 100 or less, I think, or I don't remember, but you guys understand if this guy's hurt a lot, you do 40 more damage. Steel wing, turn your opponent next turn, you block 20 while doing 40 for two. Uh, pretty solid as well, just like uh, Steel X Caesar GX's attack is uh, solid. And then Cross Cut. If a defended Pokemon is an evolved Pokemon, this attack is going to do 50 plus 30 more damage. Now, this is much better though than Caesar GX because Caesar GX can use Cross Cut only once as a GX attack. Now, granted, it's a much stronger attack, uh, basically getting one hit knockout on anything. But this is much better because even though it's not going to get like an EX, I guess, for this time, if you want to make that comparison, knockout in one hit, you can continuously use it. And I would say it's much better than using Steel Wing all day. Uh, you're going to do 80 damage. If you get the plus, uh, you're doing 120, so you can still get one hit knockouts on regular Pokemon. Uh, so I'd say it's pretty good. It has a resistance to... Uh, grass, only one retreat cost. I think the scissor has a double retreat cost, if I'm not mistaken now. I could be wrong. But I feel like this is a better card for the time than what Scissor GX is right now. Good. And then we got Steel XCX. This was definitely a very competitive Pokemon. And you'll find out why. Now... The stats look kind of crazy, you know, It's uh, but it's it's kind of good. It looks crazy, like crazy shit going around, but 
but it's good. 150 HP is incredible. You gotta remember, this is a stage 1 uh, EX Pokemon, not a stage 2. So just like most of the Steelix cards, high HP on a stage 1 Pokemon. So that was already a very good thing. You can get this guy out quick. Five or three cost is big as all fuck. It's as big as it's going to get, honestly. Uh, but it, it's Steelix, okay? And it has a double weakness to far, fire and fighting, which is, can be very troublesome. But it has a double resistance too to lightning and grass, which is good. So it's kind of balanced out in a way. And... The attacks and the power, the body are useful. You know, poison resistance. Steelix can't be poisoned. This can be handy. At least you don't have to worry about poison ever. It may not come up, but if it does, you know you don't have to worry about it. Metal charge. You do 73 and put one damage card on Steelix. Uh, kind of fair in a way. It's not that great of an attack, but it gives you that sort of range to two-shot a lot of things. The real attack was... Mudslide. Uh, for four energies, you do 100 damage to any Pokemon. This is a snipe, and then you discard two. So it's basically exactly the same attack as Blaziken EXs from Team Magma's snipe attack. Only difference is this is a stage one Pokemon and requires fighting energies as opposed to fire. Now, this was very good because it, it kind of made, in a way, outclassed. Uh, um, um, uh, Blaze of Kenny X because it's the same attack and this is a stage 1 they've, they've even have the same HP so you can even see uh, a little bit of power creep even in that era it always exists in a way uh, things were mostly evened out uh, I would say but you can definitely you know see that there is a difference this Pokemon does have a little bit of an advantage with this attack but it, it, it's the same idea, you know, 100 damage snipe, you not got pitch out in one hit, which was a major support Pokemon most people used, and you take care of a lot of things. You can just snipe them and knock them out forever. Now, how the combo worked, how this Pokemon was used with Blastoise, even though, you know, it, it requires water, you can only attach water energies, is you used the Holon uh, cast form. Yeah, I think that's how it's called. And, uh, ah, man, it, it, it it's kind of tough to remember because I don't remember exactly what his effect is. You can basically attach it, and it becomes two rainbow energy, yeah. And then you got to move an energy back into your hand. So what you did is you would attach a water energy, then attach the uh, rainbow energy to move the, move the water energy back, and then... Uh, you can sort of keep going. Uh, I don't think it was actually uh, limited to one per turn. I, I don't remember. I, I have to read the card again. But this is basically what you did. Uh, you used Blastoise to attach the water energy, to put the water energy back so you could attach the Holon energy cast form, and that acted as two energies, basically, like two rainbow energies, so you could meet the Mudslide cost. And that's why it worked nicely with Lugia X. I'm not giving you guys the best explanation because I never used this deck in my life. I just know the uh, basic concept of it. How what, what are some of the cards that were used in that deck. But this was definitely a top deck, super competitive deck. Uh, until kind of Meta Knight, uh, I guess you could say, uh, took its place. This was still good, but Meta Knight, people could say, uh, was better. All right, and I think I spent enough time on you. <clears throat> Next card, Typhlosion EX. So 150 HP, one retreat, but a double weakness. That that's sad. And then bursting up, once during your turn when you play Typhlosion to evolve, count the number of your opponent's bench Pokemon. You can search your deck for that number of far energy attached to one of your Pokemon. So very useful energy acceleration. You only get the effect once, but you get the energies from uh, the deck, and you can instantly power up a bunch of Pokemon if your opponent has a full bench. I mean, it has to be on one Pokemon, but attach them to one Pokemon. But you can instantly power up Typhlosion EX. Now, that's something. With Kindle, you do 80 for 4. You discard an energy attached to Typhlosion, and then energy on your opponent's Pokemon. So, a solid attack, I guess. Um, 
not the greatest, but that energy removal effect that's instant is powerful. Uh, that's why it's kind of balanced out with the damage and your own discard. Alright. Uh, not the greatest card, but it is cool looking at the very least. Uh, definitely for Alligator is the better EX starter here. I don't know if I'd say Meganium EX is better than Typhlosion, but uh, they're both kind of meh, to be honest. Next week up, we got Tyranidar EX, and man, I gotta finish with these EXs. We got a lot of other cards to cover, too. This set is so fucking big. So this was the first card that had four attacks, and I don't think we've ever seen seen that ever before. Or actually, no, uh, um, no, I, I say that because I remember Puka saying it in one of his videos. But honestly, I'm, I'm pretty sure I've confirmed that the first card that had four attacks was the X Blood in Hidden Legends, one of those EX sets. But that guy had four attacks, so. Turn Darty X isn't the first card to have four attacks. Okay, so 160 HP, big guy, stage two. It's got a double weakness, which sucks, psychic resistance, and a two or three cost. And let's look at all these attacks. You got Shatter, discard any stadium to 30. Derail, discard a special energy if any it has to defend any Pokemon. But it doesn't do doing 30 for two when you can do Shatter 30 for one, it is not cool. And then mix up. 70, and then your opponent discards the top card of his of his deck, uh, his or her deck. Okay, and then losing control, you do 120 for 4, and then you discard the top 3 cards of your deck. So, it's tough to accelerate fire, uh, I mean, darkness and fighting energy on a Pokemon like this. Of course, since it's dark, it gets the benefit of special dark energy, so you can even boost the damage further. Um, but I feel like there's other... There's definitely better dark Pokemon. I mean, you can't even use boost energy with a Pokemon like this since it requires specific costs. So even like something like the Salamence EX from EX Deoxys can perform its big attack much easier. So yeah, uh, powerful, but good luck powering it up. It's definitely cool though, I have to say. Kind of a weird angle here where it's it, it, the card design, but it's cool in a way. We don't see stuff like this anymore. I wanted to kind of feature the whole art, uh, so that's why it, it's kind of uh, leans on the left like this. Okay. Umbreon X. <clears throat> Man, I had a chance to win this card as an auction, but I fucked it up. I didn't have a lot of money, though. Uh, it's cool. 110 HP, you got one, you, it, it does have a retreat cost, but it has a resistance to the Psychic. So, similar case with the GX, Espeon, and Umbreon stuff. Darkness Fang isn't that impressive doing 60 for 3. Black Cry does 20 for 1. Defending Pokemon can retreat or use any Poke Powers. Now, this is a better attack. Uh, solid damage for an energy, and can retreat or use powers, so... If you use it on the right Pokemon, it can be handy. And then Darker Ring, uh, one turn of your turn before you attack when you play Umbreon to evolve. Switch one of your opponent's bench Pokemon, one of the defending Pokemon your opponent chooses. Uh, okay, that, that kind of sucks. So, it's a war point for one turn. Uh, your opponent gets to choose, which kind of makes it much weaker. Uh, Shift Tree from... EX Deoxys, you can do this basically every turn, force your opponent to switch. Mm, even though this is a stage 1, it is an EX, so I, I really wish they had the effect of Luxray, actually, Luxray level X and Lycanroc GX, where you actually do get to choose. It's like a gust of wind. Probably would have been that bad, would it? I mean, it, it would have been busted, but uh, yeah. Uh, it would have made this card very good. Uh, much better than what it is. I'd say Espeon is better though. Uh, I mean, this guy can use the special darks and get stronger. And Black Cry can be good, but... You know, Espeon just has... It just has better damage output in general, man. Like, this guy stays at 60. It can't get better. Uh, Espeon can get stronger with the add-ons. 
of the trainers. Oh well. Okay, so we're finally done with you guys, God. So let's see what we've got here. We got cycle energy and boost energy reprint warp energy. I think this is actually the first set this card appeared. Uh, when you attach this from your hand to your active Pokemon, switch that Pokemon with one of your bench Pokemon. Yeah. So this is a can I act like a switching card, an expert style card, but in the right hands it can be powerful. You get an energy attachment and you switch. Uh, goes through trainer lock too, which is why you see it in certain decks sometimes. Uh, we got metal, darkness energy, potion energy, search, uh, war point reprint. So let's look at the original cards. We have quite a few here. So we got curse powder. Uh, if the curse powder attached to active Pokemon is knocked out, put three damage counters on the attacking Pokemon. So this is like the bursting balloon, only it doesn't go away. And it has to be knocked out for you to get the effect. So kind of fair, I guess. Curse Powder. We got Energy Removal to Reprint. Energy Root. Uh, from the... I think, yeah, th this this uh, this healing item appears in Gold and Silver too. Then it appears in Ruby and Sapphire. The Herbal Medicine. As long as Energy Root is attached to a Pokemon, that Pokemon gets 20 HP. And can't use any Poke Powers or Poke Bodies. So basically... This is a card that you, let's see, um, so you can use it on any Pokemon. So if you use it on a Pokemon that doesn't have a body or a power, then you basically get the 20 HP extra for free. So that might be, that might not be so bad. I mean, considering a card like, um, uh, uh, I don't remember what it's called, but the one that gives 20 HP that came in Dragon's Exalted came so many sets after this. Uh, getting 20 HP is actually solid. Nice little tool. And then Fluffy Berry. As long as Fluffy Berry, that Pokemon's retreat cost is zero. Wow. So this basically makes the uh, Balloon Berry much shittier. I mean, that is, that is a berry, I think, too. So it has a little bit more flexibility with searching cards and stuff, but this is basically a float stone. So this is like the actual OG float stone. As long as it's attached to Pokemon, that Pokemon's retreat cost is zero. So yeah, you can see this sort of power creep. Uh, from EX Dragon, we have Balloon Berry. Uh, you can have, like, Fear Retreat for only one turn. This is kind of forever. It's actually the float stone. You get it from this team set. Looks lovely, man. These, these, they don't make them like they used to. Like even the theme set art and stuff is is perfect. Uh, like the EX, the EX Unseen Forces themes, the the booster box one, I don't dig it that much. You know, with Steelix and what have you, but I do like like the theme decks and the background arts and stuff. Uh, I remember the Poke Beach; they had them. Super cool. Way back in the day. Okay, then we got Mary's Request from the radio station. You can see there's Jasmine over there too. Like, uh, she's working on the radio too. Or like, maybe it's an interview. Who the fuck knows? Uh, maybe Jasmine does some radio shit too. Like a certain model I know. Anyway. Uh, you draw a card. If you don't have any stage 2 Pokemon in play, draw two more cards. So if you know you're running an all-basic Pokemon deck, or even a Stage 1, actually, you just need to not have a Stage 2 of all Pokemon, uh, drawing three cards is pretty good. There was, no, there was no supporter that would net you three cards with no cost. Like, either you discard something, your opponent draws a card, or you shuffle something in your deck, like with Bill's Maintenance. So, it's pretty good. I mean, it puts... <laughs> It puts DP to shame too, where we didn't have a cart like this that you could draw straight three. Yeah, that really fucked up Bill and Mom's kindness. Anyway, okay, uh, and then we got Pokeball, Pokemon Reversal. This is basically Pokemon Catcher. Professor Elm's training method, kind of similar art with what we have today from Lost Thunder, where you know there's these Hoenn starters fucking with him. 
really love the guy. Uh, they really love him. But you search your deck for an evolution card, you put it into your hand. So, this is pretty good because it gets you any evolution with no cost. There's, uh, I think, Celio's Network can get you a basic Pokemon too, but he can't get you an EX. From what I remember, that's the effect. So it really depends on your deck where Elm is going to be better and Celio's Network is going to be better. Uh, not bad. And yeah, you can see the Ho-Ho theme deck here, Golden Sky. Man, I fucking love this sort of sunset, you know, hitting the... Uh, the ocean. It really reminds me of my favorite spot in Paphos. Uh, there's a certain beach spot that's just the best. Uh, excellent. Yeah, protective orb. Um, okay, so this is pretty handy. You attach this to a Pokemon. That Pokemon is not going to have a weakness anymore. It can be useful on those damn dragon Pokemon. The fucking cessation. The fucking, uh, what was that thing that I made, a tool that made your Pokemon colorless, anyway. It's got Citrus Berry. At any time between turns, if this Pokemon card is attached, uh, yeah, uh, has at least three damage counters on it, remove three damage cards and discard Citrus Berry. Okay, so it's like a slightly better potion. It's got Solid Rage. We have more prize cards. Uh, just 20 more damage. Right, so this is a muscle band, but you gotta be behind prizes to get the effect off. It can be pretty powerful. Uh, 20 more damage, man, damn. And that's all the trainers, like the original stuff. Okay, so this video is gonna be fucking long as all fuck, but we, we gotta talk about a lot of the regular ass Pokemon. There's quite a few here, I think. So first of all, Ampharos, what you got? I think it does do something. Energy connect. As often as you like, you may move a basic energy attached to one of your bench Pokemon to your active Pokemon. Okay, so you move any energies from the uh, bench to the active. Okay, so a lot of combos you can do with this. Move energies around. Use things like uh, Mr. Briny's Compassion and it, basically you, you have the Acerola play. A Miraculous Thunder. You may discard all lightning energy attached to Ampharos if you do. If any Pokemon is burned, confused. Um, you gotta discard a lot. I mean, I guess if you have other energies on, you just gotta discard one lightning. But if you're using this, you probably have uh, lightning energies on. I don't know. But the ability, you guys can see there's a lot of combos you could do with this. Anyway, uh, Aria Dose. This I know was good. You use this Pokemon with the Flareon EX from Delta Species, which we're going to look at pretty soon. I love that. And, uh, yeah, Reactive Poison does 10 damage plus 30 more damage for each special condition affecting the defending Pokemon. So, Flareon EX, when it evolved, you put two conditions on defending Pokemon already. So, you were doing 70 damage for one with this Pokemon, which is unheard of. Uh, it's... The best damage output you can ask for for only one energy, stage one. So of course this this area dose got reprinted in Celestial Storm uh, as a kind of an iconic iconic card from that era, and it was this was a competitive deck you could use area dose with um, Flareon Flareon dose that's what it was called, and then a Spider Trap. If any Pokemon is now asleep and poisoned, and uh, you can actually pull and do this effect so. Even if you don't get the flurry on, you can still, you know, use a rare dose and make the little combo work. It's a nice attack, spider trap too, giving double condition, sleep and poison. You can actually pull an opponent's Pokemon too. Uh, wait, no, your opponent chooses the any Pokemon to switch. Okay, yeah, uh, never mind that. Double, double condition though, still. 7 HP, you, know, you could have been better, but think it balances the Pokemon out when your treat is okay. Bellasom, do you do some shit? Search your deck for up to two grass Pokemon, put them into your hand. Um, then you can switch it for one bench Pokemon. And if you have at least three Bellasom in play, 100 damage for three. 
Now, this can actually be something, I guess, if you get all of the bell sums out. If you got three, it does 100 for three. It's strong. But anyway, I don't remember this doing anything. You, I know you're cool. Once again, from my TCG overview. Intimidating Fang. Uh, this Pokemon is all around great. Uh, it's a great stage 2 Pokemon. 120 HP is great. 2 retreat cost is okay. Only one weakness, of course. I mean, it's not like it's an EX. As long as this Pokemon is active, any damage done, to, to, done by an opponent's attack is reduced by 10. So, it basically protects all of your Pokemon if you're active. You 10 less damage. So, kind of defensive. And then pull away. If your opponent has five or more energy more cards in hand, your opponent discards until they have four. So an attack that limits your opponent's hand, you do 30 for two, which is respectable. And you fuck up your opponent's hand. If they have a big hand, they're going to lose a lot of cards. They got to discard. And tonnage is also a very solid attack. It does 50 for three, but you have the option to do 80. And then you do 30 to yourself. But if you time the attack like right... Like you do some maths, you can actually get two hit knockouts using this attack on stage two Pokemon with 120 HP and stuff. So it's pretty good if I say so myself. Very solid Pokemon, looking pretty awesome too. For Alligator, we got a regular Flareon too. You got Fire Dance. Search your discard for Fire Energy attached to one of your Pokemon. One for 20, not bad. Uh, Multi Burn. Three different types. Uh, so if it has three different types of basic energy, it's going to do 60 and burn. Okay, I guess. Might be hard to pull off. Fortress. Doesn't seem like it do much. Uh, pop. Okay, it's not call explosion or whatever, but basically this does 100. And then you knock yourself out. Put seven damage counters on Fortress. And move all energy to your bench Pokemon any way you like. So I guess you get to keep the energy, which is useful. You do die and do 100. You're probably going to knock out something with this. But you get to keep the energy. Okay. And then a spiky shell. You put three damage corners and defend your Pokemon at the end of your opponent's next turn. So it's going to be like 50 for two. Okay. I've got Jolteon. Man, there's probably a lot of good Pokemon in here. Uh, but I think... Let me just find the really competitive ones. Yeah, this is King. So, item search. Once during your turn, you may search your deck for a Pokemon to search your opponent. Put it into your hand. And this can't be affected. Okay. Uh, an Aftermath does 20 damage plus 10 more damage for each Pokemon tool in your discard pods. You can't add more than 60 damage this way. Okay, so what do you do with this slow king? You used it with either this slow bro or another slow king or slow bro. Let me see. Uh, okay, it's from a different set, but there's a, a slow king or another slow bro that basically uh, you discard uh, tools from your hand and you do high damage. Or I think it's just maybe it's another Pokemon entirely. But yeah, you do a lot of damage that way, and then eventually when you have enough tools in your discard pot, then you use Slowkin, and you do a high damage with Aftermath. And Jason Klasinski also has a deck uh, of this concept if you want to see it in his articles. Okay, uh, we got Cleffa here with the Clay Art. Baby Evolution, yeah, and it still has the Eek, but it's more balanced out. You gotta attach an energy and you draw six cards. Nice, still. Man, and I think we gotta wrap this, otherwise we're gonna be here all day. Uh, you got this Gramble, I think this card does something too. Intimidating Fang. Uh, yeah, you're gonna decrease damage. Um, okay, the attacks aren't... Don't do shit, alright. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, this Eevee's good, it's like the energy evolution, you attach energy and then can search your deck and uh, for an evolution and then evolve it it's like it evolved nice little street art you got the night sky there houses urban area you know the evs hanging around 
cool. But I think... I mean, there's there's a lot of stage Pokemon that we could talk about that I'm sure they do a lot of stuff. Let's look at the Stantler. Uh, no, it's not you. I'm thinking of a different Stantler. There's a lot of Pokemon, but I think... Green Blast, 20, 10 more damage for each Grass Energy attached to all of your Pokemon. Okay, this can add up. Artillery. As long as this guy's active, your opponent's Pokemon can retreat. Okay. Um, you don't have anything else. Got the regular ass Meganium. As long as Meganium is active, remove our damage confusion from your Pokemon. Between turns. Uh, you heal your opponent's Pokemon too, though. A bouncy move. You may move up to five. Put up to five damage counters on begin. If you do this, attack us. Basically, a hundred for three. Uh, if you want to hit yourself with fifty, hundred HP is kind of low though. Well, not really, but if you're gonna be any good doing this sort of stuff, you would have appreciated twenty more HP. Let's look at the regular Typhlosion. So this guy, as long as it's active, you put one damage counter on each active Pokemon. And Rage. It's basically like a Rage attack. 50 damage plus 10 more damage for each damage counter on this guy. Okay. Man, I, I wanna... Did we forget anything? Corsola, yeah, this Pokemon. Cry for help. Search your deck for a water or fighting Pokemon. Show it to your opponent and put it into your hand. This was in a World Championship deck. I don't remember which one, but i pretty sure it was there. I think it was like the Empoleon deck when it was the uh, EX, EX format, DP format for a while. But yeah, it's a powerful searching attack. You know, you can get any water or fighting Pokemon. Uh, you can't get any X, but you can get stage Pokemon too. Not bad, perhaps. Okay, guys, I don't think there's anything else. I think we covered most of the stuff. This is, may, might be, I mean, I, I could look at all the stage twos, but this is going to take all day. If I do this like completely concisely, uh, we didn't even look at the unknowns. I can't think of any unknown that does anything significant, but there might be somebody. Anyways, uh, hope you guys enjoyed uh, this set review of EX Unseen Forces. We're getting going to get into some even better stuff. I think the next set is Delta Species, so I'm pretty hyped for that one. And uh, hopefully... It doesn't take as long because we have less cards to uh, worry about. Like we had a lot of EXs to cover in here. And a lot of, uh, you know, secret rares and stuff. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. If you're not subscribed, now is a great time to do so. Uh, I cover both contemporary content and retro stuff, as you guys can see here on my channel. Pokemon TCG Hub. Uh, hope you guys subscribe. Leave a like. Share this with your friends. And thank you guys for watching.